Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is March 3rd, and right now we are looking at the visible satellite imagery. You can see the sun rise across the Pacific Ocean. We've got another frontal system out here. It's going to be rolling through on the day tomorrow, Tuesday. There are some light showers here across some of the region, and it's not too bad right now, but you can see there are a lot of clouds out there. There's some fog this morning across some areas as well. If you run into that, make sure to slow down. So we'll dive into those details as we go through the video here this morning, but I wanted to point this out. I want to get your uh, guys's um, uh, input here on a worldwide weather watch. So I just made this channel here, um, kind of an educational fun video where we take a look at some of the most uh, interesting weather across the planet from strongest jet streams, strongest storms, where it's cyclones and hurricanes and typhoons are and the strongest storms and where the polar lobes are moving around here and what kind of places across the planet are getting some very unusual weather for their locations. Just kind of a fun thing. So let me know in the comments below what you think about that. And, you know, it's not something that I'm, you know, tied to too much. So we'll just kind of see how it goes and see what your guys' reaction is to it. Um, now, off back to the forecast and whatnot here. And also just pointing this out, by the time we get to the end of April, we're looking at 8.20 p.m. sunsets at the end of March. We're at like 7.38 or something like that. Glorious times incoming. Now, taking a look here, this Gale watch is for that system on Tuesday. There's some small craft advisories still out there, but this is going to be a little bit of a bluster here for the coastal area, some of the northwest interior. So I'll show you more on that here, a storm here in a moment. You can see there is that Gale watch for some of southwest Washington down in towards the Oregon coastline as well. Same system there. And Medford, Oregon, you can see that small craft advisory. Now, we still have another wind advisory here. It includes Boise and Mountain Home yet again. And uh, this are, these are for gusts, I believe, up towards 50 miles per hour. This is from 2 p.m. this afternoon afternoon through 8 p.m. this evening, Mountain Standard Time, Treasure Valley. So wider view of things here. There's the Hawaiian Islands, the bottom left. There's California, Oregon, Washington, and British Columbia along the west coast of North America. So here goes our next system. That's the frontal system that's going to move through on the day Tuesday. There's going to be some unstable air behind that. More on that here in a moment. Then you can kind of see the trough carving out. A lot of that energy going down into California. A bit of a transient ridge here, but we are going to have more systems rolling through this weekend. Uh, this one has an atmospheric river look to it. And we're watching this one closely. We'll go into a little bit more detail on the mounts here because the, the actual axis of this atmospheric river has been shifting around a little bit. It did include Washington a little bit more. I'll show you some of that here in a moment. A lot of that energy again then goes down into California. Gulf of Alaska trough gets established pretty well as we go through the 9th, 10th, 11th and 12th time frame here. Some lower snow levels will probably come rolling in here. It's still off in the future a little bit, but the model has been quite consistently showing it. You see the ridge out here, kind of a La Nina signature. Cooler northwest flow allowing for this troughing here along the west coast of North America. We'll see how long that hangs out for. Now, look at the precipitation. So here we go. There goes Tuesday's system right there. It's going to bring some precipitation here across the region. Again, a lot of that energy moving into California. You can see we get a, a day, it looks like a dry day across some of the Pacific Northwest. Still some precipitation across Oregon, southern Idaho, and into western Montana. Then Friday starts off dry, but that atmospheric river is quickly bearing down on western BC, Vancouver Island. Friday night, it's sliding down into Washington. We'd be hitting the Olympic Mountains, some of the North Cascades there as well. Looks like that kind of initially misses Oregon, but then the frontal system will swing through. And then we turn to that cooler pattern here. We've got the onshore flow and we may do some mountain snow building here, uh, you know, through the extended forecast. So that's good news here because we desperately need it across the higher terrain. And you kind of see us stay active as we go through the mid portion of March upcoming here. So yeah, March is coming in, you know, it's not coming in quite like a line, but it it's good. looks like it's going to be fairly active as we move through the mid-March period. Now, 24 hours running snow totals here. So we get a little bit of a bump with that Tuesday system across BC. The Olympics get a little bit of a coating there. And not we're looking at light amounts across the Washington, Oregon Cascades. And again, this is running 24-hour total. So we're going to scroll through here towards this weekend. A lot of this is going to be higher uh, elevation stuff initially. Uh, atmospheric River is a little bit on the warm side. But then we turn the onshore flow. And you can see the, Olymp uh, the Cascades of Oregon, Washington, and BC getting some nice snowfall out of that. A lot of snow going down into California as well. So this onshore pattern will definitely be better for some potential. And even some slower snow elevations are showing up also. I wouldn't rule out snowflakes on some of the higher hilltops, western Washington, maybe western Oregon, also southwest BC. Of course, no exception there as well. 
Now let's take a look at Tuesday's system on the high resolution models. Again, still some showers rolling on today, but you get that relative break as we go through tomorrow morning. But as we go through early tomorrow morning, that system is going to be impacting southwest Oregon first. See the rainfall moving up the coastline. This is about 9 a.m. There's 10 a.m., 11, 12. There's about noon. You see maybe some of the precipitation coming in through the Willamette Valley, a bit of snow flying for the Cascades of Washington, Oregon. There goes our low pressure center there. A bit of a blustery uh, frontal system there, as you can see. See, there's a, a, not too bad of a pressure gradient associated with that storm. And then we scroll through about uh, 00Z, which is about 4 p.m. Uh, tomorrow afternoon. And then we're going to get some unstable air behind that. There is going to be a thunderstorm threat. More on that here in a moment. And then we start to relax the precipitation from that storm and we wait to see what is coming next. Max accumulated 10 meter wind gusts. So I do want to show you that we do have a bit of some gusty wind action. Again, as we go through tomorrow morning, you'll notice that picking up along some of the Oregon coast. Uh, potentially, you can't roll out a 50 mile per hour gust there, but this is not a huge windstorm by any stretch of the imagination. Maybe a 50 mile per hour gust there for La Push. You can see a lot of that energy moving up towards Vancouver Island. You can't roll out maybe a 50 mile per hour gust there as well. And you see some of these gusts going up over 40 for some of the Northwest interior and the Strait of Georgia as well as we deal with that system tomorrow. Now, what is going on here with this system? So if I take a look here, you'll see that Tuesday, here goes the frontal system there, but watch the cold air loft right there. That's what's gonna destabilize the atmosphere behind the frontal system. You can kind of see that swoop inland there. You cannot rule out a lightning strike or two as that colder air rushes in. When that colder air rushes in, you know, you create a steeper lapse rate you make a bigger difference between what's going on at the surface and aloft. And when that's known as convective available potential energy. And if I show you the sounding there, this is hoquiam at that same time. This is the surface here and you see this little profile there. That is the Kate profile. You can also see the winds aloft here as well. So that would bring some instability and the potential for that thunderstorm threat. And the colder these temperatures are aloft, you can imagine the greater the amount of convective available potential energy there is. So you cool it off and then you bring that instability, that parcel will rise easier and you get those updrafts and you can get thunderstorm activity. And you can kind of see that surface space cape here again, 4 p.m. on Tuesday, mainly the coastal areas with the thunderstorm threat. And you can see that the European now kind of caught on to this as well. I was watching this yesterday. It wasn't showing anything, but it has uh, showed it there, but not too big of a deal. And the, even the SPC actually shows a little bit of that clip in the Washington, Oregon coastline there. And by the way, if you're across some of the, uh, you know, it looks like Louisiana, Mississippi, and up towards Little Rock, you got to watch out because there is a strong tornado threat tomorrow. So if you know anyone or have loved ones down there, uh, keep them, um, you know, let, let them know about that. They probably already know, but, you know, keep that in the back of your mind, especially if you're traveling as well. So total snow could share ratio in inches on last night's European or yesterday afternoon's European. So as we scroll through the extended, you notice that bump in the snowfall there. That's when we get this shift and we start to move things more out of the northwest. Stronger onshore flow, flow colder air aloft coming in here. And you see even some of the snows mixing down to the lower elevations. And some of the crazy GFS runs have been showing some accumulating snowfall. You, you want to ignore that right now. We have plenty of time to worry about that here as we go. And it's very difficult to get sticky snowfall at this time of year down for Seattle and Portland, for example. It doesn't mean some of the higher hills can't get some, and it's not out of the realm of possibility you can get some accumulating snow still at this time of year, but it's not something that you should, you know, start to get your heart set on or anything like that. So kind of ignore that for now if you see that in some of the social media stuff. Uh, Seattle Tacoma does show some of that here as well. Maybe the potential flirting with that, but again, it would probably be out across the higher terrain right now. This goes out 46 days. Now, taking a look at 500 millibar height. So we've been watching this every single day. We're going to do it again. Here we go into the 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th. You can clearly see we have that signal for a kind of a La Nina signature there with the northwest flow and the troughing here across western Canada down into the west coast of North America. That signal has been very strong if you've been watching for the last week or so and even much longer than that. I've been hinting at this for quite a while so that continues to show in the weather models. Here's the 6 to 10 day below normal for a lot of the west coast. There's the above normal for the Pacific Northwest as we go through March 12th and look at that below normal signal there. They're picking up on that troughing here across the west coast of north america and eight to 14 day as well above normal across much of the west so anyway yeah check out worldwide weather watch and i will see how that goes it, it largely depends on a lot of your input here as well so we'll we'll see and i'll do a couple of videos and kind of show you i'll do an official video tomorrow or something and it'll be a learning curve you know i'll be 
learning new things and I'll be finding new uh, um, new information and whatnot and what to use during the videos and kind of fine tune them. I'll try to make the videos not too long as well. This is just kind of an educational fun thing where we look at active weather across the planet. We learn new things about the world as well together and be, yeah, again, like I said, it'll be a learning curve and it'll get better with time. But anyway, let me know what you think. Otherwise, uh, click like and subscribe. We'll do this all again tomorrow and I will talk to you guys then.